Let's talk about this invited topical review of Michelle Sterling on whiplash associated disorders. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Whiplash associated disorders are a common complaint in today's society. The main symptom of whiplash is neck pain, although symptoms such as stiffness, dizziness, paresthesia or anesthesia in the upper quadrant, headaches, and arm pain are frequently reported as well. International data suggests that approximately half of people sustaining a whiplash injury still report symptoms one year after the accident. Psychiatric disorders such as post-traumatic stress disorder, depression and anxiety are often associated and these individuals usually report higher levels of disability, pain and reduced physical function. Three general pathways of recovery are identified with on the y-axis the neck disability index and on the x-axis time since the injury. You can see that if recovery occurs it will take place in the first two to three months after the injury. A common question will then be can we identify the patients that will develop chronic symptoms as well as those that will recover fully. A clinical prediction rule was found for full recovery being neck disability scores under 32% with an age under 36. Predicting moderate to severe disability at 12 months was fairly possible with a neck disability score of more than 40%, an age above 34 years, and a score of more than 5 on the hyperarousal subscale of the post-traumatic stress diagnostic scale. Here you can see other prognostic indicators of poor functional recovery. At your first consultation, the pain and disability should be reported because of its consistent prognostic capacity. The visual analog scale and neck disability index can be of use here. Keeping an eye out for psychological issues is recommended. Examples are an inability to sleep due to thoughts about the accident or avoiding driving due to fear. Much of the clinical examination is in line with neck pain guidelines. Classifying whiplash-associated disorders is possible with the Quebec Task Force classification. Most patients will fall in category number two. Identifying specific structures at cause is impossible in most cases. Imaging is therefore only required when grade four disorders are suspected. The Canadian C-spine rule or Nexus rule are valid tools for elevating this suspicion. Patients with whiplash-associated disorders often report diffuse symptoms of sensory loss or gain and generalized muscle weakness. This is frequently due to the altered nociceptive processing and not necessarily a neurological compromise. Previous research has found inferior performance on motor control involving the cervical flexor, extensor and scapular muscle groups when compared to asymptomatic control participants. Changes in muscle morphology of the cervical flexor and the extensor muscles, loss of strength and endurance of cervical and scapular muscle groups, and sensory motor changes manifested by increased joint repositioning errors, poor kinesthetic awareness, altered eye movement control, and loss of balance. That is a mouthful. You can read up about the assessment of all these issues in Jol et al. 2008. Now, how do we manage these patients? Advice to stay active and picking up where they left off in their activities should be one of the first things to do. And exercise should work, right? Well, kinda, but not much, and effects do not seem to hold up that long. Exercise therapy generally has small effect sizes for whiplash-associated disorders, but at least it's better than a soft collar or rest. The the type of exercise does not seem to matter, so we could just scale up whatever the patient likes between range of motion exercises, McKenzie exercises, postural exercises and strength and motor control exercises. The use of manual therapy can be added as long as the patient benefits from it, measured with validated outcome measures. However, the quality of the evidence is pretty low. As you've probably heard, there are few effective treatments for whiplash-associated disorders. More research is definitely needed. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. I'm Max for Physio Tutors and I will see you in another video. Bye.